I've been a Star Wars fan since I was a kid, and as soon as I finished this wooden R2-D2 last year, I knew I wanted to do something with the Mandalorian. Stick around and let me know if you think I did him justice. This is the way. I'm using walnut and cherry veneers to create the background and silhouette for this piece. I taped two pieces together and overlaid them with this image I purchased from brings.lv, and I'll link to their website below. I used a brand new sharp X-Acto knife and carefully cut around the border of the image. By cutting both veneers at the same time, I created a near-perfect inlay. Had I done these separately, I would have had a hard time getting a seamless fit between the two pieces. You can see how the walnut will provide a dark background and contrast nicely with the cherry. I then taped the veneers to hold them in place during the glue up. And since this was only near perfect, I used black paint along the seam and border to hide any imperfections. I used some walnut veneer along the back as well to give the illusion that this was one thick piece of hardwood. But the fact that this is only veneers will just be our little secret. And here you can see I'm being sure to not glue all the way up to the seam to avoid any squeeze out. I glued the veneers to a piece of pine and set them aside under some melamine boards and random heavy objects around the shop. For the white pieces of the silhouette, I'm using a couple thin pieces of basswood. Using different thicknesses will help give the finished image a little more depth and character. The reason I use tape here is to act as a barrier between the glue and wood so my sanding job is a little easier later on. I took a little more time here than I probably needed to in cutting out each shape because the scroll saw basically does this step for me, but it did help me get the exact grain pattern I wanted. The next day I took the veneers out of the makeshift press and was really happy with the glue up. From there I got to work on the scroll saw. I learned from R2-D2 that taking my time here will save me a lot of sanding and filing in the future. I was also really pleased with the way the basswood cut. It's light and easy to cut, but has a tight grain, so it's still fairly strong. If you like scroll saw projects, I've got two people you've got to check out. Laughing Mantis Studio on Instagram is an absolute wizard and huge inspiration for me. And Steve with the Scroll Saw Workshop has a very useful blog and newsletter. I'll link to both of them in the notes below. And I don't know about you, but time-lapse scroll saw projects are kind of one of those oddly satisfying things for me, so I'm just going to be quiet and let you enjoy this for a minute. Some of these pieces were so small that it was actually easier to cut them with an X-Acto knife. Once everything was cut out on the scroll saw, I prepared myself for hours upon hours of shaping and sanding. However, I just couldn't bring myself to do that right now, so I put everything in a bucket and set it aside for later. I wanted the frame for this piece to be a feature in and of itself, so I started with a nice, thick piece of walnut. I cut it down to about an inch and a quarter by an inch and three quarters. I then made a one eighth by three quarter inch rabbit for the piece to sit in. From there I cut 45s on my miter saw and instead of trying to measure within the rabbit, I used the actual piece to mark the lines. When assembling frames, I like to tape the corners before the glue up because it holds things in place a little better during clamping. And I put some wax paper down on my table saw surface here because that's probably the flattest surface I've got in the shop and will give me the truest glue up. After the glue up dried, I got to work on the first little detail on this frame and that was to put a couple of splines in each miter. I made a quick jig to hold the frame at 45 degrees and put it through the table saw on each side. This created an eighth inch slot perfectly spaced on each corner. I then filled each slot with a piece of bass, which I think ties the piece together nicely. Splines usually add quite a bit of strength to the joint, but since these are only basswood, they're mostly decorative. I trimmed them flush and sanded them smooth and was really happy with the way they looked. 
Once the splines were done, I worked on the second detail for this frame, and that was to put a large chamfer on each side, but not to go all the way to the corner. I marked my start and stop lines, and then used my router to take the first pass. I then adjusted the depth of the bit and took the second pass. Doing it in two steps like this lets the router take off less material and reduces the chances of messing up. I sanded off the burn marks and moved on to the third and final detail for the frame. In the lower right hand corner I added the Mythosaur skull which is a symbol of the Mandalore and seen throughout the show. To do this I made a stencil using tape and outlined the logo with a craft knife. I then used a Dremel to carefully carve out the shape, being sure to take my time and take light passes. Messing up now would be just about enough to send me over the edge. Luckily the walnut carves really well and I didn't make any huge mistakes. I cleaned out the carving real well and then used some 5 minute epoxy mixed with some black latex paint and filled the void. I came back that night and removed the tape, which helped keep the epoxy out of the grain and helped me get a better final image. I sanded it smooth and was thrilled to see the final image and this last little detail of the frame turned out so well. Now that the frame was done, it was time for me to face the music and get to sanding all those pieces. Wait, what's this? But how? All those pieces are shaped and sanded exactly as I need them. Did a droid sneak in at night and do this for me? Maybe a couple of uncharacteristically friendly Jawas? Or maybe Grogu used the Force and did it for me? I guess we'll never know, but I am sure glad I don't have to do it myself. I thought it would never come, but it was finally time to start gluing the image together. I'm using super glue here because it's my favorite tool in the shop. I used the original image as a reference and slowly worked my way around, carefully gluing each piece in the exact right position. It's hard for me to express how satisfying this stage was for me. Watching the image come together was like watching a double sunset on Tatooine. Some of the pieces were so tiny that I was picking super glue off my finger for days. The final stage of this project is to put it all together and apply finish to bring out the grain in that cherry and walnut. Watching walnut go from dull gray to rich brown never gets old, am I right? Thank you all so much for watching, and may the force be with you.